Hello all and welcome to my presentation about the electromagnetic spectrum. My name is Jamie Moore. In this presentation I will be hoping to achieve these following objectives. The electromagnetic waves travel through a vacuum at a velocity of 300 million meters per second with a variety of wavelengths and frequencies at different amplitudes or intensities of energy. The human eye evolved to detect a group of these wavelengths located in the middle range. This is known as the spectrum of visible light. A good example of the visible uh, of a visible light is a rainbow. With the mist in the air, the light is being refracted through the droplets, causing you to see these colours. With infrared, you cannot see these, but you can feel the heat radiating with them. Similarly, with ultraviolet radiation, it causes visible effects such as damage to the skin when exposed to the sun. Wavelengths. With the lower frequency, we use everyday objects such as microwaves and also in radio waves and TV signals for communication. Whereas shorter wavelengths with higher frequency waves, we use more in medicine with uses such as X-rays and gamma rays, as you can see in the diagram here. Magnets have what is called a magnetic field. This occurs when you try to put two north sides of the magnets together. They will try to repel each other. Lightning storms are charged particles traveling between clouds and the earth. If you were to hold a compass near the storm, you would see the needle spinning wildly. This is because the electricity and magnetism are inextricable, linked to each other. You can't have one without the other. A moving electric charge creates a magnetic field and vice versa. The electric field and magnetic field travels together, isosceline at right angles to one another, moving through a vacuum at a fastest known speed in the universe, the speed of light, as you can see in the diagram here. The following image is that of a transverse wave. This wave shows various features, such as the distance between peak is called a wavelength, is represented by the Greek letter ambata, and is measured in meters. The frequency, or f, is, marked, is not marked on this diagram, but you can see the number of peaks per second as the wave moves along. This is measured in the cycles per second, one cycle being one whole wave, which is moving from the center base line up to its peak, down to the bottom and through, and back up to the center line, <coughs> as example here. The amplitude is a measure of a wave height from the baseline is basically the measure of the power of the wave. When you turn the volume of your music, the amplitude of the wave increases. So this section here. These measurements are related through the wave equation. The equation calculates wave velocity, V equals FA. The velocity or wave speed is represented by V and is measured in meters per second. Frequency and wavelengths are inversely proportional, meaning that as the value of one goes up, the other one goes down. Electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. When looking at equations, the light of speed is given the letter C, the Latin word celataris, meaning light. All waves travel at the same speed, the speed of light. This means that shorter waves must pass more frequently than long waves, and shorter waves mean in higher frequency, and longer waves meaning lower frequency. There are three properties of waves, velocity, wavelength and frequency are mathematically related to the equation velocity equals frequency times wavelength. The easy way to write down this is in a triangle shown here. This way you can easily calculate the missing value. If you have two values, <coughs> but want to find the other value, cover the missing value, and then use a method to calculate the second diagram shown here. So if you want to calculate velocity times fr uh, frequency by wavelength. The fourth value, uh, the fourth property of waves is considered as amplitude. This is measurement of the wave is carrying. An example of this is an ocean wave. The higher the wave, the larger the volume of water which is carried, which means more energy. The amplitude of electromagnetic radiation is a measure of its intensity, or more familiarly, in the case of light, its brightness. 
Beyond the visible spectrum, in the opposite direction, takes us from red into a longer wavelength infrared light. Infrared, IR, occupies a band of the spectrum between 700 nanometers to about 1 millimeter wavelength. Objects that give off heat are emitted infrared radiation. Humans emit radiation, uh, emit IR radiation. The only exception of this is cold blooded animals, such as insects and reptiles, as these do not. Our eyes cannot see infrared radiation, but we can use equipment to measure it and display its intensity. An example of this is thermal imaging systems. We can use thermal imaging on buildings to detect any heat loss to help with options of insulation. Public services such as police, fire and rescue and military use thermal imaging, surveillance or search and rescue operations. Home security systems incorporate source of infrared light into their security cameras. This gives the camera night vision. Infrared lights are used in many handheld short range control systems such as TV remote controls. These use infrared light source to transmit the code signals that change the channel or alter the volume. Low cost remote control toys often incorporate an tra IR transmitter and receiver to steer the toy around. The distance an infrared signal can travel varies based on the strength of the transmitter but is usually around a meter for household devices. There must also be a direct line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. If there is a wall or a large object between them, the signal can be reflected. Most commonly is a microwave oven. Similarly to infrared radiation, it carries energy to heat things but does it in a different way. Conventional heating by conduction or convection transfers energy from the outside inside. Hence, the dangers of undercooking something in the middle in a conventional oven. Microwaves, however, penetrate the food using isosceling electromagnetic fields cause dipolar molecules, such as water, to vibrate, and as they try to align themselves with the moving field, this causes localized superheating from the inside of the food, as you can see here. Microwaves are a band of EM radiation between infrared and radio waves. Microwaves are unidirectional and communicate only along a line of sight route. Radio waves, however, are broadcasted in all directions. Terrestrial microwave transmissions are limited to a 30 mile range due to the curvature of the Earth and require a line of sight. Transmission via satellite links will extend to hundreds of miles. As you can see, here. Bluetooth is a close range microwave application working on a line of sight. It has a longer wavelength compared to infrared allowing transmission through walls and other objects. Bluetooth has a range of about 10 meters. Most commonly used for syncing smartphones with computers, wireless headsets and hand free uses inside Bluetooth enabled cars. Bluetooth could re uh, replace infrared in many different areas, but the technology is not meant to be used for wireless networking. Instead, Wi-Fi technology, which uses a longer wavelength radio waves, has a larger range and higher bandwidth than Bluetooth, and is standard in most wireless networking equipment users. Here you can see in this slide a table comparing infrared Bluetooth in these five categories. Infrared can only be used in a direct line of sight, whereas Bluetooth has no limits, only range. Infrared can only be used, um, similarly, infrared security can only be intercepted by a, a device in a line of sight. This makes it more secure, whereas Bluetooth is less secure, even with coded protection due to its omnidirectional nature. Infrared can work up to 5 meters, whereas Bluetooth has a range of 10 meters, making it superior. Infrared can only have one-to-one -one connection with another device, whereas Bluetooth can form networks when all devices are connected. Infrared devices are built specifically for each device, whereas Bluetooth can work together, making it simpler. X-rays are a form of electromagnetic radiation with higher frequency waves that carry more energy and penetrate further. They are a band of electromagnetic spectrum between 0.01 and 10 nanometers. As you can see from the image, there are a shorter wavelength and higher frequency 
visible light being on the opposite side of the spectrum. X-rays have many uses, such as dentists for X-rays and dental issues. In the medical world, doctors use X-rays to diagnose fra bone fractures, infections such as pneumonia, calcifications like kidney stones, certain tumours, arthritis in joints, osteoporosis, heart problems, blood vessel blockages, digestive system problems, and foreign objects. X-rays can also help diagnose a medical issue or monitor treatment progression without the need to physically enter and examine a patient. They can also help guide medical professions as they insert catheters, stents, or any other medical devices inside the patient. As you can see, the X-ray here has shown a perfect image of someone's breakage in the shoulder. With the benefits of x-rays, there are also hazards. Although the side effects of x-rays whilst pregnant are minimal, it is important to protect the developing fetus from any harm that x-rays produce. Um, they can produce radiation, which can harm living tissues. The risk is small, but increases with cumulative exposure. They can also cause mutations in our DNA. Therefore, there are a slight increased risk of developing cancer later in life. They are also linked to cataracts in the eyes and skin burns, but only at extreme high levels of radiation. These are minimal hazards compared with the benefits that we gain from x-rays. <coughs> in this slide, you can see just how much exposure you get with each image compared to natural background radiation. For example, a simple chest x-ray is equivalent to 2.4 days of natural background radiation. Visible light is known as white light, but actually consists of a range of wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, which we recognize as color. It travels less quickly through other transparent materials, such as glass and plastic, uh, and water due to it having to make its way between the atoms that make up the medium. When light travels from air into glass, it slows down and then speeds back up when back into the air again. You will be able to see the wavelengths of colours. These consist of red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet. Objects around us, both natural and man-made, appear to us in an array of colours. But what we are seeing are specific wavelengths of light. For an example, we see a tomato as red because it is transmitting light towards us, the red light. All of the other colours are absorbed into the objects. This light energy can be absorbed in the form of heat. Uh, you can also see light change when it passes through a coloured filter. For an example, if you get a purple filter and you look through it, all you will see is purple. So Isaac Newton argued that the geometric nature of the laws of reflection and refraction could only be explained if the light was made of particles, as waves don't tend to travel in straight lines. Newton then passed a beam of white light through two prisms, as you can see here, which were held at particular angles that it split into the spectrum when passing through the first prism and was recomposed back into white light by the second prism. <coughs> As you can see here, passed, transmitted, passed white light. This showed that the colour spectrum is not caused by glass corrupting the light. Newton claimed that this was a crucial experiment. He also introduced the word colour spectrum. Visible light has many uses, such as periscopes, telescopes, and binoculars, as you can see from the image here. All of these use visible light by reflecting off the mirrors at specific angles or using lenses to magnify the effects of the light. CSI investigators use microscopes to review samples that they've collected at the scene. Having increased magnification, the investigators can see things that the human eye cannot. They can also compare things such as hair samples to confirm identity, or other uses for visible light include TV monitors, laser light, communication and printing. Laser light has multiple uses including the curing of medical diseases such as kidney stones, or to simply cut the patient open to operate on. So as you can see from this image, it's magnifying through these lenses to help get us a better image. 
Ultraviolet is beyond the visible spectrum with a wavelength between 400 nanometers and 10 nanometers. These applications are sometimes referred to as black light. It is a shorter wavelength, a higher frequency, and carries more energy than the visible spectrum. UV light can redden your skin and cause blisters. A fluorescent substance absorbs one set of wavelengths but emits another. In crime scene investigations, investigators will use a black light to detect blood and any other bodily fluids. This is known as biofluorescence. There are many uses for ultraviolet, the first being for the use of fluorescent pigments such as high-vis shirts, day-glow paints and banknotes. Secondly, and most importantly, is for crime scene investigations. This is used for detecting bodily fluids such as blood, saliva, sweat, semen or even fingerprints. This is crucial for solving crimes. Without this, there would be many unsolved crimes. It helps reduce the risk of collecting unnecessary stains. UV light can detect blood on dark, red or violet surfaces. It can find blood stains that have been concealed by paint. UV light is also used in fire investigations, identifying the presence of accelerants or to identify poor patterns. It's also used for UV sterilization, such as dentists, hospitals, food processing, and air purifying plants. UV light can assist in environmental investigations by indicating the presence of hydrocarbons on the land in, uh, or and in water. Police routinely use UV light to detect, identify, and return stolen property that has been marked with fluorescent ink. Some narcotics, such as amphetamine, cocaine, and certain MDMA tablets, are clearly fluorescent when illuminated with UV light. As you can see from this picture, a perfect example of a fingerprint whilst using UV light. These can obviously help with the investigations. IR radiation will heat up anything it strikes. If it's powerful enough, the IR radiation can cause superficial burns and blisters to skin tissue. The greater damage, however, is by direct contact with the hot objects. Even the heating element on an electric stove glow red hot poses little danger unless you actually touch it. Intense focus infrared light can also cause damage to parts of the eye, such as the corona and retina. UV radiation is much more dangerous. UV light has a higher frequency of the electromagnetic radiation, which carries more energy than infrared and can penetrate further. It's closer to x-rays than infrared. UV light can break chemical bonds and molecules and cause chemical reactions to take place. Too much exposure to UV light can penetrate into the human cells and cause chemical changes to the DNA. This can result in mutating and cancerous cell development within the DNA. Some UV light is extremely beneficial to humans creating vitamin D. Benefits include bone growth, immune system function, and regulation of blood pressure. Here you can see the references that I use for this presentation. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed yourself.